In the last video, when we were talking about linear feedback shift registers, we put together exclusive OR circuits that, and, and that's just one kind, but that took the feedback from a shift register, looped it back around to the input in order to create sequences. And we talked about the periods that were generated by different type of mathematical sequence generators. Well, this time we're just gonna do a really simple sequence generator. In fact, it's gonna look a little bit like the hardware that we created whenever we did uh, uh, state machines in computer organization. There's a slight difference though because the state machines we did in computer organization had an input. This is not going to have an input. In fact, think about it this way. If you if you want to think about a decimal sequence repeating itself, how about 852 divided by 999,000, all right? And what this is going to equal is a sequence 08520852085 et cetera, et cetera. So you've got this sequence, 08520852. And whenever you're talking about generating sequences, there are so many applications. For example, if you do some sort of an error, if there's an error on your computer and, and it's not something that can be displayed, maybe the, maybe the BIOS hadn't come up enough to display anything on the screen, you may get a blinking light, like a blink and then blink, blink, and then, you know, some sort of a pattern or maybe something, an error code showing up on your dashboard. Uh, it may be that you need to generate a test sequence so that we can make sure that we get exactly the same sequence of numbers over and over again in order to test some sort of a hardware system. Those sorts of things are going to be generated with hardware. And we'll do a little bit of a design sequence right now to show how that's done. Now remember, when we talked about linear feedback shift registers and taking the values that were contained in the different bits of that shift register, routing it around through an exclusive or feedback function in order to go as the input, we couldn't have zeros as, you know, all zeros as one of the states. That's not the same whenever it comes to generating these simple sequences. Now it's probably easiest to just start with a simple sequence. How about we do zero, two, one, three. And let's say that we want to generate that sequence using memory devices. Now, how many bits do we need? Well, in this case, and remember, we can't have the zero case with those linear feedback shift registers, but we're just generating a sequence now. So we're going to actually, we're going to look at this sequence. It turns out that I have four different patterns I want to represent. That's four different states. Well, two squared is equal to four, which is less than or equal to the number of values that I want to represent here. So that should be sufficient. The system is going to look like this. I'm going to have one memory cell, and we're going to use a D flip-flop. So we've got D, Q, and clock. And we've got another one, D, Q, and clock. We'll call this guy A and this guy B. The only input to our system is going to be a clock. So we're not going to have any external input. We just simply turn on this system and it starts counting. 0, 2, 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 3. So the period is 4. I've got four different elements there. The period is 4. So what I probably ought to do, and, and, and what's, what's going to happen is I'm going to have some sort of a logic circuit here. All right. And that logic circuit is going to take the current values of A and B and give new values that I'm going to call A prime and B prime. So together, it's going to take A and B, these two different values, run it through a logic circuit in order to figure out what the next value is. So for example, if I have 0, 0 here, the next value should be 2, which in binary is a 1, 0. So the 0, 0 coming in here is going to generate logic that is going to give me a 1, 0. So the next time we get a clock pulse, we're going to get a 2 in there. And then a 1, 0 in here going into the logic circuit is going to tell us our next state is going to be 0, 1 or a 1. And then a 0, 1 here is going to go into the logic circuit and generate a 1, 1 to give us a 3, and then a 1, 1 is going to go in here to give us a 0, 0 to say that we're going to wrap around because we've reached the end of our period. So 
The truth table actually should be quite simple. All I need is to figure out based on the current values of A and B, what my next state is. We did this in the computer organization when we started talking about state machines. We're gonna do it again now, but remember, we don't have an external input, so this truth table is gonna be a little bit simpler. So I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, if I'm in 0, 0, what are my next values for A and B gonna be? Well, if I get a clock pulse, 0 to 2, well in binary, a 2 is a 1, 0. So if I get a 0, 0, I get a 1, 0 as my next state. Now if I'm in 1, 0, let's say I went down to 1, 0, we won't fill out this truth table in sequence. What we'll do is just simply go to the next state. 1, 0, 2, my next state is going to be 0, 1. That's going to bring me up to this row. If I get a clock pulse now, when I'm in state 0, 1, I'm going to go to state 1, 1. And then whenever I get a clock pulse from 1, 1, I'm going to loop back around because I've reached the end of my period to 0, 0. And so we can actually figure out what our function is, what our logic circuit is going to look like. Actually, in this case, it's pretty easy. Hopefully, you can look at it having gone through your logic design in our computer organization. You can see that A prime is simply equal to the opposite of A. So A bar, the inverse of A. And B prime, the next state for B, is, a, is going to be equal to, well, if A and B are different, we're going to output a 1. If A and B are the same, we're going to output a 0. That is our two input exclusive OR. Now, let's see if we can't draw this circuit. In order to make this circuit, I am going to have my D, Q, and clock, my D, Q and clock for my circuits for A and B. Remember that they're both going to be driven off of the same clock. All right. Now, these Qs are actually, remember, if you remember from your D flip flop uh, lecture, the Qs contain the current values inside of the box. So, A prime, the next value of A, if we look at our expression up here, is just the inverse of A. That's all it took. So we just simply take whatever is currently in A, flip it around, that will give us our next value of A. And that will help us at least realize this first column of the truth table. Now this next one is gonna be a little bit more difficult to draw, and I'm gonna draw my gates backwards, but remember that the exclusive OR gate, that was an OR gate that had this double curve at the, at the input side. We're gonna take B, and we're going to take A, and that is going to, the A exclusive ORD with B, that is going to give us our next value. And so this simple circuit is going to, as long as you've got a clock pulse that is driving, that heartbeat driving the input, or you know, driving us to the next state and to the next state, no external input, this system right here is going to go through this sequence, 0, 2, 1, 3. Let's do another example. All right, let's do another example. And in fact, let's make this example, I don't know, have six elements. And I'm going to make these numbers not, once again, they're not going to be in order, but I'm going to make them limited in terms of their magnitude so that they can be contained inside the number of D flip-flops that we're going to be using to implement this circuit. But that doesn't mean we can't have some sort of a mapping that say zero maps to 24 and one maps to 89 and so forth. I'm just going to stick with the smaller numbers so that the circuit comes out a little bit easier to understand. So how about a 0, 2, 3, 7, 5, 4, all right? There's my sequence. And I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, but this time I'm going to need more flip-flops. Why? Because there's more than four states. If I only have two flip-flops, I'm only good for up to four states. And what I want to do is if I've got, if I've got for example, let's say N is the number of flip-flops or bits that I'm using, it has to be greater than or equal to the number of states. And I don't know, let's just represent that with K. Well, in this case, K is equal to six. So the smallest value of N that satisfies this expression is n equals 3. n equals 3 means I've got 2 to the 3 or 8 possible different patterns of 1s and zeros inside those 3 D flip-flops. 
and eight will more than sufficiently cover those six. When we start talking about binary sequences in the next video, we'll see that that might not always be the case. We may have to go beyond what our minimum is. But let's go ahead and do our next state truth table. So this time, I've got A, B, and C, my three bits, so I'm going to have three different flip-flops representing A, B, and C, and I'm just going to do a standard three input truth table. So there are all the possible combinations of ones and zeros that we can do with three bits. All right. Now, what I'm looking for is what the next values of A, B, and C, in other words, A prime, B prime, and C prime are in each one of these conditions. So if I'm in zero, all right, that's zero, 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 the next state needs to be two. In binary, that's zero, one, zero. Now if I'm in two, zero, one, zero, the next state is gonna be three, so that's zero, one, one. If I'm in three, the next state is gonna be seven. Well, seven is one, one, one. If I'm in seven, the next state is gonna be five, which is one, zero, one. And if I'm in state five, the next state is gonna be four, one, zero, zero. Now we can't forget that this period is gonna loop us back around. So we've got one more transition that we need to worry about. And that's the transition where we go from four back to zero. So in four, once we go to four, we're gonna then go back to zero. And zero has already been defined. So it looks like we've finished our truth table here. But since, two to the n represents eight possible states, and we're only using six of them, we've got these two blanks here, these two blank rows. Remember, whenever we tried to figure out how to create the most simplified sum of products expression, um, if there was an undefined state or something that we didn't know where it was going to or didn't care where it was going to, we entered it and entered these x's, these don't cares. Now, from our experience with Carnell maps, remember I can create a Carnell map for each one of these columns. So based on my inputs A, B, and C, I can figure out what the next values of A prime, B prime, and C prime are going to be. All right. All right, now we remember we have to, now if you go back and review our Carnal map videos, there are a bunch of them. Um, we numbered with gray code here and numbered each one of these rows so that neighboring cells differed by exactly one input variable, A, B, and C. And all I need to do is take this truth table and map it up here. And once I do the mapping, then that truth table actually doesn't, isn't important to us anymore. It, 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 all the information we need is represented in these Carnell maps. So let's see. So in 0, 0, 0, we go to 0, 1, 0. In 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, we don't care. Those are our wild cards. In 0, 1, 0, we go to 0, 1, 1. In 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, we go to all ones. All right. In 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, we have don't cares. In 1, 1, 1, this bottom row, we go to 1, 0, 1. In 1, 0, 0, they jump up to this fifth row that we had skipped over. We're going to state 0, 0, 0. And in 101, 101, we're going to state 100. Now, turns out these rectangles are pretty simple. Tarnoff must have gotten this sequence beforehand, huh? We've got a rectangle here where we assume that that x is a 1 and that x would be a 0. In this, in B prime, we've got this rectangle here where this x is a 0, that x is a 1. And in this Carnell map, we have a rectangle here where this X is a one, that X is a zero. Those are pretty simple expressions. So we've got A prime is equal to, well, as long as C is a one, A prime is gonna be equal to a one. In this one, we've got B prime is equal to, well, as long as A is a zero, so we have a bar. As long as a is a zero, we output a one in b prime. 
And in this one, we've got that as long as b is a 1, c prime is equal to 1. So we've got b, c prime is equal to b. So those, those, those expressions are pretty simple. Let me erase this truth table and we'll write the ex we'll draw the we'll draw the circuit. All right, so we're going to have three d flip flops d clock q d clock and q and d clock and q. And so we've got a, b, and c. All of these are going to be driven off of the same clock. All right. The key is, is figuring out what the circuit is. Well, it turns out that these are pretty simple circuits. For example, A prime is just going to follow what C is. So we're going to take C and that is going to be routed around to A. All right. Now, B prime, in other words, the next value that we're looking at for B, that is just equal to A bar. Now, a lot of these D flip-flops tend to have the, the inverse of what's contained in there, the Q bar, as one of their outputs. I'm just simply going to write an inverter here in order to show that we're using the opposite of what's stored in A. And then C prime, the next value of C, is just equal to B. All right. And so there's our circuit, as simple as it is. The deal is, is that this circuit right here will, every clock pulse, move us to the next value in that sequence. So it would go 0, 0, 0. Well, 0, 0, 0. A is going to get 0. B is going to get the inverse of 0, 1. And then C is going to get B. So you're going to go from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 1, 0, which is 2. So it goes along in our sequence. Now, in our next video, we're going to go back to those linear feedback shift registers, specifically looking at a shift register where the last bit is going to give us a binary sequence. These binary sequences are used for all sorts of things. Once again, we're talking about test sequences or maybe error sequences, but also they're going to be used whenever we talk about pseudo random number generators, all things that are very important when it comes to computing.